You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 11022. And are you ready for the great resignation? What's the great resignation, you say? Well, it's happening all over. Millions of people leaving the labor force for various reasons. I guess uh, work ain't what it used to be. Well, here to discuss is our good friend, Carl Gould. And Carl, it is great to have you back on. Your website is sevenstageadvisors.com. That's seven, the number seven, stageadvisors.com. What is going on with our labor force now? Well, you know, it's um, it's not so much that the work has changed a lot. It's the work environment has changed a lot. And that's, and that's what we're really concerned about because the you have with, with COVID, you've got the over 50 crowd that is questioning, is this all there is? And they're also asking themselves the question, is it safe to go back? Right. And, and with the, some of the, um, some of the, you know, varying messages from the CDC, they're not convinced and they're not trusting the message that they're getting from, uh, from the CDC because it's so, it's so all over the place that they're looking for better lifestyle choices. Now, part of the misconception of why why a number of uh, the younger 20-something, 30-something, 40-somethings are um, resigning is not what you think. Yes, they would like more flexibility. And yes, you're asking them to come back to the office. You sent them home for two years. You want them back in the office, right? But they have all these uh, issues that they've been dealing with at home for all this time, like they might uh, have sold their car because they didn't have they didn't have uh, the cash, or they had childcare, or they've got a kid that's that's at home being homeschooled or virtual. So they have to deal with these things. You want them back in the office now, but they haven't solved their home issues. But more so than and more so than anything, Kerry is. 58 million people, 58 million people over the last two years have reported or admitted that they have done a side hustle, side project um, from home. And so, and that's 2 million more over the last 18 months than were before. And so now what you're doing is you're asking somebody to come back into the workforce. They have to give up their side hustles. And what's happening is if a kid's in the side hustle and some people are making as much money on their side hustle or darn near close to it than they were if uh, in their regular salary job. And so the um, uh, so you're asking them to give up their side hustle. So they'd rather resign, do their side hustle and then find another job that gives them the flexibility of working from home. That's what's happening. All right. Well, that's part of it. I think uh, I read somewhere that a couple percent of the workforce has uh, retired on their crypto earnings. Well, yeah. I think, well, I mean, there's a reality to that. I've, I've advised a couple of crypto uh, traders and experts, and there's plenty of money to be made there. There's also plenty to be lost there. You know, if you remember 2008, when the financial crisis hit and the, um, and the, uh, um, the, the, everybody's retirement accounts went through the floor. A lot of people went back to work. You know, it was a great migration back to work because they realize now they're not, their retirement fund isn't what it, what it, they hoped it would be. So the, um, so yeah, there, there'll be some people that will make, um, the stock market has made great gains. And, uh, for, for those that took advantage of that, sure. There'll be some people that'll, you know, Hey, if you win the lottery, you might retire too. Right. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, there, there's, there's some of that going around for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, so lifestyles change, work conditions change. I mean, I've been working from home from home for the past 10 years and I never knew if I was going to like it or not. I was always concerned there would be a large weight gain that would take place. But alas, uh, I found the cure to that is just not having any food or certainly not having any junk in the house and confining my eating to strict periods. But working from home, side hustles, it's not for everybody, is it? 
No, no. And and look, the pre-pandemic, nobody, and I mean nobody, was talking about, hey, let's send all of our workers home. That's the best way to build culture and have a cohesive team and build a sustainable company. I mean, yes, there's virtual companies. Mine happens to be one of them. But nobody was talking about that's the best way to build strong culture. And you know what? There's going to come a time when we're, we are back in the office and it, it will return to being the preferred way. Um, but I do think we're we're going to find it's going to take some time to get there and there is going to be a hybrid environment for a period of time all right and yeah some uh look uh, if you work in a deli or you work in a restaurant there's no there's no working from home here right uh that's a really tough one to do how do you do that one huh well, there, there is no working from home. However, those businesses have the ability to automate. So for example, you know, if you've been to certain restaurants like a Panera Bread, you could walk up to an iPad and place your order. That used to be a person. You used to have to go to the cashier to pay. That doesn't, you don't need to do that anymore. So there is some automation here that can take, take away some jobs. So if I'm, um, if, if, uh, let me, let, this is a shout out to all the workers out there. For those of you that think like, Hey, I'm just going to work from home and that's fine. And I'll, I'll figure it out. And that's the way I'm going to do it. You certainly can, but understand that you are auditioning to your boss, that your job can be done by someone anywhere in the world. So if you think you're going to be, you do your job virtually forever, understand that, uh, business owners all around the uh, country right now are if, if, if the work can be done on a screen and it can be done anywhere in the world, um, they're going to look, for, they're going to, they're going to realize that they have a global pool of employees that they can leverage and that they're going to look out and see if they can get it done at a more economic rate. So um, if I'm you, I go back into the office, I go back to the restaurant or the deli and I show my boss just how indispensable I am and how willing I am to come back into the office. All right. So just because you like working from a home uh, and uh, you're just as productive, that doesn't mean you should be doing that. Well, you're you're putting your you're putting yourself at risk. I mean, right now there are 300 million um, Chinese students learning English. 300 million. That's almost the entire population of the United States. There are more people in China learning English than there are people in America. And that now let's go to India. You want to go there? You want to go to Vietnam? You want to go to all these other countries that understand that we live in a virtual world now and just the economics and the, and the exchange, the currency exchange is such that we, you know, it's in our favor and we can be doing, we can be um, having work completed for 25, 30, 40 cents on the dollar. And these are people that have gotten their college degrees. Um, these are uber qualified people that can do the job. Um, and you know, if you, you are, you are now competing with somebody who has equal or better credentials, who's, who can do the happily do the work at 30% of your salary, because 30% of your salary in their country, you know, is a very nice middle-class income. So you, you are putting yourself, you're, you're really increasing your vulnerability by just saying, I'm just going to be virtual. You can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it, uh, but you are, you're competing with somebody who's, who, you know, who has an advantage on you. And uh, so what are three things that employees should do right now to secure their position with their company? Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. American Eagle Gold is focused on exploring for a world-class gold deposit on its flagship property, Golden Gate, located in the Cortez Trend, next door to Barrick Gold and Newmont Mining's Gold Rush and Cortez Mine. They have produced over 27 million ounces of gold. The company plans to drill and advance its relatively unexplored property and continue to focus on acquiring and advancing gold projects in the area. Vice President of Exploration Mark Bradley was at the helm of the team that discovered and defined Gold Rush and has spent the better part of 30 years working on the Cortez trend. American Eagle trades under the symbol AEG on the TSX Venture. For more information and to sign up for notifications, go to AmericanEagleGold.ca. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. 
The number one thing I would do right now, I wouldn't wait, is, and I tell this to employees every time I speak with them, is within the next 18 months, you will either be replaced by a virtual employee or you will be managing one on your team. Because wow. this is where the, this is where it's going. So the first thing I would do is I would take a class, get a certificate, go on YouTube, get familiar with project management skills, get your certification in project management, take the class, watch the TED Talks, you name it, but get skilled in project management because you will be either managing one and if you in a, a virtual employee or a team, but if you're not skilled at doing it, you'll be replaced by one. So that's the first thing that I would do, number one. Number two is I would, I would talk to my boss about what would be a, what is it you need or want right now for your employment? Uh, uh, employees don't often speak up enough and just say, look, I need to be able to come in a little later or I need to, uh, can I come in on Saturday instead of Friday? Or my kids are, you know, uh, at last minute notice they're sent home and no one's there to watch them. So I would share with your uh, boss what, what your life situation is and uh, employers are very happy to be flexible if they know what they need to do to help you. And so I, I would share what that is. And then um, the third thing I would do is I would ask for more responsibility. You know, whatever the job is, and this has always been the case, but you certainly want to do it now. Think about the person who owns the business. They have gone through hell and back over the last two years, and this has been the most merciless um, economic correction and, and uh, disruption in anyone's lifetime. And so they have really been through the ringer, whether they, whether, even if they were um, a company that benefited from the pandemic, you know, they're tired. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, a lot of energy has been expended. So go to your employer and say, how can I help? Where can I contribute more? How can I take more responsibility? That will be music to their ears and will make you even more valuable to them. Uh, I like the concept here. It sounds uh, really sound. And it's all about increasing your value to your employer, right? That's right. And, and the more you increase your value to that employer, the more you will increase your value to any employer. So this isn't just, hey, let me work harder, let me work longer, you know, to satisfy this one person. You are making yourself more marketable overall, you know, and, and the very training or certification that your, your employer might put you through might help you to do a side hustle in the future. You know, they get you, um, I know in our business, when we, we train people up on certain softwares, they're very adept at a number of different platforms that makes them very marketable to the outside world for side projects. So, you know, take, take, you know, take your, uh, have that conversation with your employer because they will likely pay for some of your training. All right. I like that. Well, so there's a lot of things you can do. You shouldn't just sit back and wait to be replaced by a foreign worker or an algorithm, huh? No, uh, but if you do sit back, it's going to happen because the, you know, the, the, there will be some measure of inflation coming forward. And all that means the, the fancy term for it's going to be more expensive for business owners to run their business. And first place, the number, the, the highest expense any uh, business owner has is their payroll. It's their, it's their people. So you, what you do is you look at your highest cost and you say, how can I make that cost more efficient? And unfortunately that that is going to mean more virtual. That's going to be more outsourcing and more offshoring for sure. All right. Well, you've given us a lot to chew over here, Carl. Uh, hey, your employees, obviously you want them to keep training, keep improving, investing in human capital so that they increase their value to you. But sometimes you can increase their value right out the door. Yeah. Uh, well, that's true. That's true. And, and, and look, the, the day of the 30 year employee may be gone. So, you know, the, the, the thinking here should be, what do I want? Do I want highly trained employees who might leave or do I want very low skilled, low trained employees that stay, <laughs> you know? So I, I would create an, I would create an environment of excellence and um, you know, and if someone's in your business for three to five years, you know, they, uh, uh, and, and they help you just 
be prepared for that and just have a more have a more continuous training environment so it's just part of your culture so it's not a big shock when somebody moves on and you have to train the next person i I just have to share with you good friend of mine airline pilot from major airline he worked for that airline for 44 years and nine months. He was never laid off ever. He was flying cargo flights uh, at various times, but as his seniority moved up, he never was laid off. He was the longest serving pilot in history in terms of hours. He had over 45,000 hours in the cockpit. And wow. and he, he just uh, flew his last flight about three, four weeks ago. And at the airport... They had two pumper trucks and they uh, mm. they did water cannons. They you know, sprayed ag- the plane down. Yeah, they sprayed the plane, acknowledging that uh, that he was leaving. Now he, he can't really get used to the idea of not traveling the world. So he's going to be flying private planes, which is a whole new right experience. Right. But uh, when you said no more gold watches, I don't know that he got a gold watch and they uh, the airline got bankrupt a couple times and terminated his pension, but he had a really good 401k. He had a great career. Uh, no, uh, no charity is necessary for him. He was smart, didn't live too high, but uh, God, he's an anachronism, isn't he? He sure is. And, and, but it does go to show you that an employer is not going to turn away a good employee who wants to work a long time. You know, it's it's not the employer's choice that tenure out of business is short. It's more the employee's choice that's doing that. So if you want to stay at a business for a long period of time and you want to you want to participate in that company's growth over a long period of time, the employer is going to love it because employers favor loyalty and trust over skill set. So I've watched I've watched many of an an employee who wasn't the most technically savvy person in the world, but they were loyal. They worked hard, gave it their all. They bought into the company's mission and vision and really did their best. And you see those people are there forever. And those are the kind of people you want on your team. So, yeah. On the other hand, my millennial kids, well, my son uh, has moved to three or four different jobs in the past uh, two years, and each time he got higher pay, uh, more stock options, all this with the uh, tech companies. So that's a reason why they really kind of uh, negatively reinforce loyalty at the company or that uh, that move on and you'll get what you're really worth. Whereas if you stay at a company, they aren't going to give you as much money as when you move. Yeah, the um, it's a whole um, it's a whole metaphor of, you know, if you're trying to get down the highway and you keep switching lanes, you know, I go from the middle lane to the left lane to the middle lane to the right lane back to the left lane. You know, um, while it seems like you're being busier moving lanes and you're like, wow, I'm getting there faster. You realize you get into that middle lane or to that right lane and you see the car that was in front of you that you try to get around passes you right up. So so if you're if you can play the. Um, if you can play the job hopping game where you have very minimal downtime or you do have a side hustle that carries you through and so you're not tapping into your savings, you can play that game. You can play the signing bonus and bounce around game. Um, most um, I, over the years I've employed and helped employ thousands of people. And what I found is that, you know, a lot of people with that think the grass is always greener somewhere else. You know, they realize that, you know, the st- stability um, the stability and certainty of the job that they had is oftentimes a lot more valuable than the uncertainty, instability, and you know, somewhat, somewhat chaos of of the uh, of bouncing around. Now that that is for some people, they like it, and if that's the case, go for it. Uh, but for the most part, you know, people I think appreciate the stability of of the job that they have. Well, Carl, you know what I always say. If the grass is greener on the other side, it's because there's a lot of horse manure over there. <laughs> That's right. And it's, and it's uh, going to be everywhere you see green, right? Yeah. So, so, that's it. Yeah. It always, it, yeah, it's, it always looks that way. Um, yeah. I, I, I've had plenty of employees and, and, and strategic partners over the years come back, you know, and, uh, you know, as long as you don't make them admit that I was right and they were wrong, they usually come right back and, you know, hop right back in and get into their old groove and go. So, um, 
you know, hopefully, hopefully listening out there, you know, weigh those options before you go, because right now the environment is, um, you know, because it's an employee's market, there are a lot of people that are getting, you know, upfront inducements to move. Uh, but you find out that the company can't sustain that. You know, there's a reason why you were paid what you were paid at your first job, because that's what's realistic. The company that paid you some ridiculous signing bonus and some huge salary, they can't afford that. They can't afford it. They never would have paid it to you unless they felt they had to. So it's a ransom and they're hoping you, you know, their, their expectation is you'll perform at the level of your salary, not at the level of the position at the level of the salary. So if you got a 50% bump, guess what the expectation is? You have to be 50% better, more productive, more of uh, 50% better ROI, or they won't be able to afford you. And this great gig you just got is going to go away. Yeah. I think you're right. Well, Carl, it's always great having you on, and we appreciate your sharing your uh, insights into the current labor market. I think there's a, you know, there's a lot less to a lot of these advancement paths than meets the eye. Uh, the website seven stageadvisors dot com. That's seven, the number stageadvisors dot com. You got a question for Carl? Shoot us an email. KL at KerryLutz.com. Don't forget, get your free newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Carl, always a pleasure. Best wishes for the coming year. We'll talk to you again soon. You got it. Enjoy. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.